So I've been through a lot as an Asian kid, you know. So they, this is like a reborn to me to come back to this society. And I take very serious of it. I'm not going to do nothing to jeopardize my freedom. So when I first got out, all I have is a set of clothes that I worn on that day. And a $200 of CDC gate money. And if you take a bus, you got to out of the pocket of the $200. I just want to correct some of the, they say that, and a bus ticket, no it's not. So, so I've been there, I've done that. And also, I don't know, have a California ID. I mean, I have nothing. When I mean nothing, I mean nothing. I was never like that in my life, but I have to accept for the consequences of my life, of my outcome. So now go, go back to the $200. What can you do with the $200 expression in San Francisco? Oh. Everything got raised up, minimum wage, the gas, and even the tax too. So, you know, please take a look at that $200, please. <laughs> I encourage whoever has the money to, to make that happen for like at least something. And then when I was out here, I have so much question in my life. I went to report to my parole officer. I told my parole officer, I didn't do jaywalk, I didn't do drink. And he laughed at me in a good sense of where I like, and then I asked him, I, I said, well, when can I see the doctor? Because while I was in there, I housed it with some of the women that who have uh, positive HIV and hepatitis C, because I don't want to bring nothing back to my family. And then I, I need to go to back to college. That's where I recognize, like, it, without education, you're without nothing in life. That's what is it. And I need a job to support myself to pay for my, my support. I'm 29 years old now. So all he told me, uh, I don't know. And I was like, okay. And it kind of hit me at that time, because I was lost. I don't know what to do. That's a big gap for me for all this year. You know, back in the day when I was out here, they don't know have internet, not email. So it's just a lot of things I have to learn. So I went. A uh, parole officer and then told me that I need to mandate it to go to the pa uh, PAC meeting. So in the PAC meeting, that's when I find all the sources. So in the PAC meeting is they have all the basic five need or six now, because I add the $200 in there. <laughs> <laughs> so the basic five need is housing, food, job, counseling, support, and then education. And to be honest with you, a lot of people really, from my experience in there, because this is my first, my last, and my only, but ever since I've been there, like 10 years, I have so much people in and out. It's a like, revolving door. It just, like, I heard everything about the parole system. I mean, before I walk out this door, I already know the whole cha-cha about this. <laughs> All they say that the parole officer is, all they want is report to them, give them a clean test, and go to the PAC meeting. Other than that, you're on your own. So a lot of them, they disbelieve, disappointed, disappointment, and they just give up. Because, to be honest with you, a lot of them, they refer the life, I'm sorry to say that, but this is true. A lot of, most of them, they refer the life in there more than out here because in there, they have a place for them to live. They have food when time to be served. They have clothes to wear, and then they earn the only eight cents if they work, when they work. So while they were in there, they have all the support, and they don't have to think about, oh, what am I going to do next month, or what am I going to do next few months, and that's, that's what is this? That's a reality, seriously. So while I was out there, I went to the PAC meeting. I was the only girl in a fee, uh, in an Asian female in there, and it was 30 male in there. And some of them, two or three of them, they were falling asleep. You can tr see the drool off the mouth. <laughs> 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 
and then you can see those people like they were like, okay, whatever, just get this over it. I'll move on with my life. So with me, because I've been housing, I've been housing with the lifer and dead row. I know how it is that this second chance for me. So I take advantage of because in the pack meeting at the end, you need to take three business cards. And then after the three business card, so of those, that's when I met all those people because I took everybody the business card. And that's when I find out Northern California Service Link, which is uh, Valerie Lau, my counselor. And then I found out se uh, Second Chance, um, Charles, Mr. Charles Morris, which is my mentor, and which is I find out Patrick Rebounds in State University, Jason Bell, and he's over here too. And which is I find out Southeast Health Center, my doctor, two of my most famous respectful doctor. Ms. One of them is uh, Ms. Uh, Wong here, and then the other one is Dr. Hong, and they help me the best they can. And without the courage or without their support beside my family and my friends, I would not be able to come here and speak on the behalf. And another, th another thing, this is the most important I would like to cover, is as a human being, it don't matter if you're African American or Latino or anything, or white, excuse my language, but once we take off our skin, we have the same flesh. And people do make a mistake. And in order to, for you to learn that in that mistake, it, we need to learn how to get up from, stand up for our mistake. But who are we going to have that accountability? Who is going to lend the hand out? Like here, if you need help, I'll be there for you. Everybody can talk, but it's the action, though. The reality, though, you know? Prove it. Actions speak louder than words. So that's about it. Thank you.